Let's just cross to uh, Aisha Ismail now. She's out on the Grand Parade and uh, she's been busy there all morning. Yeah. Aisha, over to you. Well, Annika, there are the preparations here on the Grand Parade outside the City Hall is in full swing. And as I said earlier, it is quite um, historic and nostalgic to be on the Grand Parade because this is the place where, and I heard Pippa Green talking about it as well, in 1989 when Archbishop Desmond Tutu led that march from Parliament to the City Hall and where he declared that we are the Rainbow Nation. It was also here in 1994 where he introduced um, Nelson Mandela as our first brand new president. But what we're going to do is later this evening at 6 o'clock there will be an official City of Cape Town memorial service that will be held here at the City Hall and the city is calling on Cape Townians and even visitors to the city to come out and to enjoy this moment. And while we are mourning the death of our beloved Archbishop, we are also going to celebrate his life because this is exactly what he would have wanted. Now just in terms of the program which will start at around 6 o'clock, we have a full lineup. We have Cheryl Carolus, you will recall that she she's an ANC veteran, she was a leader in the United Democratic Front and she was appointed as South Africa's first um, High Commissioner to the UK in, 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 the, in Democratic South Africa. We will also be hearing from the Mayor of Cape Town as well as the Premier of Cape Town but there will also be entertainment and the legendary um, Jonathan Butler as well as Vicky Sampson will be performing here at the City Hall but let us also not forget the interfaith service and this is what the Archbishop was also about interfaith relationships so we will be seeing and hearing from representatives from the Muslim faith, Christian faith, Jewish faith, Hindu, um, Baha'i, as well as from the Khoisan and the African traditional faiths. So again, that's going to be streamed live um, so that people who are not able to make it to the Grand Parade, they'll be able to sit in the comfort of their homes to watch the city of Cape Town paying tribute and honoring such a great man. And that is our father, Desmond Mpilo Tutu. Yeah. And Aisha, in terms of the venue for this memorial service, uh, this interfaith service, it couldn't be even more iconic. It couldn't be more iconic uh, than the Grand Parade and uh, the Cape Town City Hall. I don't know how much of that uh, world-famous balcony can you see there um, from where you are standing. If you are able to just show it to our viewers as we reflect uh, on, you know, that's the point where uh, the address after Nelson Mandela had been released from prison uh, on the 10th of February 1990. And Desmond Mpilo Tutu also uh, very much involved in the backdrop uh, of the uh, of, of, of events that were leading up to this. Um, from what I read, from what I, he I read, um, Aisha and uh, Annika, he had, uh, Desmond Tutu, had felt that, you know, Nelson Mandela, there was absolutely no way for him to not come here and speak to the crowds that were gathering here. Apparently the crowds were becoming restless. Yeah, he was insistent and Trevor Manuel, who we'll speak to later, I believe, uh, will tell us how they got lost and how they ended up at a woman's house in Mowbray. <laughs> <laughs> waiting yeah. to get to City Hall, but uh, it certainly is an iconic spot, and I think uh, the city has been planning for a very long time yeah. for this moment. Uh, so, the, you know, the memorial service, Aisha, I think, uh, has probably been pretty well put together. Just something I wanted to ask you in terms of who can actually go inside, uh, what is the capacity looking like, Aisha? I'm just thinking in terms of COVID. Well, Annika, I've been told by the city of Cape Town that while the city hall can accommodate well over a thousand people, they have only invited between 200 and 300 people. And of course, as you say, due to COVID-19 regulations, and, and, and it's the same as well for the funeral on, on Saturday at St. George's Cathedral, only a hundred people will be allowed to enter the cathedral to attend the funeral service on Saturday. But also remember, Initially, we were only going to have lying in state um, for one day. That has now been extended to two days. So Archbishop Desmond Tutu's body will lie in state on Thursday and on Friday to allow people to come and pay their respects to, as I said, our beloved Archbishop.
Desmond I've, Pilo Tutu. Aisha, before, we, before you go, I've been uh, asked by a lot of people how busy St. George's Cathedral is. Uh, what is the traffic like in and out of there for people who want to sign the Books of Remembrance uh, and pay their last respects? Look, it's very organized. The city of Cape Town has n a number of condolence books, and so they are observing all um, COVID-19 protocols. There's a system where you go in, your temperature gets taken, um, you can sanitize your hands, go through, lay, uh, you know, some flowers and also just leave a note and sign the condolence books. And yesterday I was fortunate to be inside the cathedral just in time for the Angelus prayer and to hear the Angelus bells ringing at 12 noon. And there was quite a steady flow of people coming in just to come in and sit and reflect and to meditate inside St. George's Cathedral. And as I always say, the cathedral is the people's cathedral and people still feel comfortable whether you are you know it doesn't matter wh which faith you are from the doors of the cathedral of st george's cathedral will always be open to welcome people to just come and pray and to reflect and just to come and have a quiet moment and i think that's what people have been doing since the news of the archer's passing broke on sunday